Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. For this video, I'm going to discuss how can wave actually propagate on a transmission line. So this will be the objective for this video. This will be the part four series discussion on transmission line theory. If you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will find videos that will be very relevant to the derive of the equation, for example, on the transmission line theory. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, feel free to drop me an email. Before I continue, I would like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, feel free to give me comment or suggestion okay, so that the quality of this channel can be further improved. Once again, guys, thank you so much. Okay, so these are all the equations that I have derived on the transmission line theory, part one, part two, and part three. Okay, if there's a need, okay, please look at all those videos again in order to recall how I actually derive all this equation. So these are all the equation okay, that I mentioned earlier on based on the previous video. So because over this video, from time to time, I will be using some of the equation. So I just want to do a very quick conclusion on all the equation that I have derived earlier on. Let's understand on wave propagation on a transmission line. Okay, so this is VZ, okay, which means that this is a transmission line. At any point of the transmission line over here, for example, I want to know the voltage basically will be governed by this equation. Okay, so this will be, for example, at this particular location, what will be the voltage basically will be determined by this factor. So what are all these factors? Okay, so firstly, okay, so this part here, will be, we call a incident wave. This part here, we call it a reflected wave. You probably will ask, how can we know this is incident wave? Or how can we know this is a reflected wave? Okay, so let's take a deeper in order to understand what this is called an incident wave and why this is actually a reflected wave. Okay, so this is, will be the point. So for example, when I actually want to know the VZ over here, so this Z will be equal to zero, okay, because this is without any difference or the first reference point of Z. So when you actually move to your right, your Z value actually increase. So basically this is one when my when I actually shift towards the right on the transmission line, okay, the Z value increase. And again, these are all governed by this equation. Okay, so like what I mentioned earlier on, how will I be able to know this is incident or this is actually a reflected wave? Basically, Let's work up a very simple mathematics to understand this. Okay, so I want to highlight this E minus KZ and E positive KZ. Okay, so let's do some mathematics. Okay, so this actually fall over here, E minus KZ. Okay, so I want to put into two extreme case. Okay, one, I will just use zero and another one I'll be using minus 10 because this over here is minus. So from here, I actually get two different types of value. Okay, the first one, okay, which is very short length, for example, the reference point is zero. I have a value of one. And when the Z start to increase, I realize that the number start to reduce. So will it, this part here will be incidence or reflected wave. So this will be the input. Okay, so imagine once you have the input, your electromagnetic wave start to propagate, 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 propagate. And when they actually hit, for example, there's a load, basically reflected wave occur. Okay, so basically this is wave propagation on a transmission line. I will have my incident wave and I also will have my reflected wave. If the impedance is not similar or not the same, then I will have reflected wave. So over here, okay, I have done very extreme case. For example, this is zero. At any point of Z, okay, basically you can see that the value reduce. So when Z increase, Okay, the number actually reduced. So basically, you can see that this incident wave, when they move forward, can you imagine that the wave becomes smaller and smaller? Can you imagine this? When the wave actually move to your right, 
okay, you can imagine that the amplitude start to become smaller and smaller. So over here, therefore, I know that this is basically is an incident wave. So therefore, I conclude that this is actually an incident wave. Let's take a look on the reflector wave. Again, I bring into two extreme case. Okay, from here, you can see that this is one and the number increase. Let's understand on the reflector wave. So I mentioned earlier on the incident wave propagate hit the this mismatch on the impedance reflection actually occur. So when I actually move my set from zero point here and on to further to your right, okay, I can see that the number increase as for the reflector. Typically, this will be a large amplitude, let's say, and the amplitude over here will be smaller. So therefore, from here, okay, I can conclude that this is actually a reflected wave because over here, typically, they have a bigger number. So when Z actually moves to the right, they actually has a bigger number. When on your left, the Z actually has a smaller value. So therefore, for this part here, I conclude that it will be a reflected wave. Okay, so this is how I actually know that this will be an incident wave. This will be a reflected wave. Let's continue. Okay, so from here, up I have mentioned earlier on, I can actually derive this voltage point and also the current point at any point of the transmission line. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, or any point of the transmission line, I will be able to know my voltage. I also will be able to know my current from this equation here. So this is basically the incident wave. This will be the reflected wave. Same for the current. This will be the incident wave. This will be the Refractor wave. So basically, the definition here is mentioned here. E minus K Z K represent the wave propagate in the plus Z direction, which means that they actually move to the the right. Wow, well, for E K Z K, they basically represent wave propagate in the minus Z direction. Okay, so basically from here, you know that this will be refracted. This will be the incident wave. Okay, let's take a look on the equation to understand better. Okay, so this is actually from equation three. Okay, so if you are not familiar, you can quickly rewind forward and look at equation three. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this equation seven. Okay, so why I want to differentiate? Because once I differentiate, these two equations will be similar. So if I differentiate over here, okay, I actually can get have two similar dvz and dz over here. So I differentiate my equation seven. Okay, so this term here, okay, the Z term is only here. So if I differentiate E minus KZ, I will have minus K E minus KZ. If you understand what I mean. So basically, this will be the minus K and E minus KZ if I differentiate this term. Okay, so again, if you are not familiar on a differential, okay, take a quick look, search online, you will be able to understand what I meant. Okay, so over here, I managed to get the term after differential. Over here, I also need to differentiate this here. Okay, so what I need to do again will be K. So K term will be coming over here. The rest of the term over here is exactly the same. So as I mentioned earlier on, the motivation why I want to do a differential on equation 7 is because from here you can see that these two are exactly the same. So I conclude that this term here is the same as this term here. So I can rewrite the formula. So this is basically over here on your left, and this term is on your right. So from here, okay, I can put this as a subject, okay, Iz. Okay, so this thing I need to move to the so-called to the left. So basically, this will be divide minus minus cancel off. So basically, k divided by this term here, the rest of this term actually remain. Okay, so next, what I'm going to do is basically again, this is Iz. Okay, I can see that this is basically the IZ term over here. So this part of IZ, I can use this to represent, correct? Because they are the same. This is IZ, this is IZ. I can use this equation to represent this whole term here. So let me write on the next page. Okay, so this is what I meant earlier on. So this part here is actually from here. Okay, and then this part here is actually from here. So I have this equation here. So next. Okay, I'm going to put everything to find my characteristic impedance. So this is my V term. Okay, so I have all my current term. So you know that Z equals to V over I. Z, which is the impedance, is equal to voltage over current. So what I need to do is simply, I need 
to move this to the right and I need to move this term to the left. So this is the outcome. So once I move this thing over to the right, so basically I divide by this term here. So this part become one. So this part with this. So next I need to shift this guy over to the left. So I basically just reverse it. So from here is actually you can imagine Z equals to V over I. So from here, I conclude that this will be my characteristic impedance. Okay, and this will be the equation to describe the characteristic impedance at any point of the transmission line. So once I have this case, okay, I rewrite the equation over here. So from here, you can see that this part, I rewrite over here. So again, okay, what is K? If you still remember, K is a propagation constant. Okay, earlier on, I have also jotted down this equation. Okay, so the k will be simply a square root over this part here. So this is what how I get this equation, a square root over this part here. Okay, so finally, how I actually got this equation, okay, this part here, okay, you can imagine that the power is 1. This part here is half. So 1 minus half, I actually get half. So basically, they appear on top. Okay, so this part here, g will be remain. So they will be still at the bottom. So this, I like to denote them as equation 10. Okay, so once I've done this, okay, I can easily find my characteristic impedance. So this set here, okay, I will be able to find my characteristic impedance. And this set here, again, I will be able to find my characteristic impedance. So next, okay, let's come to the last equation for this video. Okay, so now I'm ready to rewrite the equation. Okay, basically over here, you can see that okay, this part here okay, will be V0 plus. Okay, so imagine I need to find my IZ. Okay, this part, how I get my I0 plus will be V0 plus divided by Z0. Over here, okay, as I told you that this part will be minus V0 here. So basically, this part I will change to minus okay, because this I0 here will be minus here. So if you reshuffle the equation, you know what I mean. So again, from here, okay, I like to use another equation. Okay, so today, okay, the key objective is I want to reintroduce this equation here, equation number 9 and also equation number 10. Okay, so that we can discuss on the next video. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. I hope you learned something. So if this video is helpful, please consider to like and also subscribe to the channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much, guys.